स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर दैट इज अबाउट टिश्यू आई एम आर जी मैम इज विथ यू टू स्टार्ट द सेकेंड चैप्टर ऑफ योर नाइन्थ क्लास दैट इज ऑल अबाउट टिश्यू सो वॉट इज टिश्यू स्टूडेंट्स विच वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर सो आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द लेक्चर नंबर वन ऑफ टिश्यू सो स्टूडेंट्स फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट दैट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टूड वॉट इज अ टिश्यू एक्चुअली in the first chapter we learned about this thing that how cells are organized okay now what is a cell we learned about this thing and we have gone deeply in the cell world so when cells combine when cells combine and form a group it is known as what tissue when cells combine and form a group it is known as tissue and when tissues combine it is known as organ and then the organ system is formed so this is how the arrangement takes place inside a particular human body so students what is a tissue we are going to understand each and everything in this particular lecture now before starting this chapter i want to give a brief introduction about tissue chapter and i want to make you understood this thing that how tissues are organized inside a particular plant cell as well as the animal cells now if we talk about the animal cells then in an animal different type of tissues are present in different kinds of organs if we talk about the digestive organ if we talk about our skin our hairs our eyes each and every part of our body consist of different kinds of tissues okay students so this is how the organ system is organized now if we talk about plants then you can see this thing that we pluck a leaf or a flower from a plant now after a particular interval of time a new leaf arises or a plant arises but this not not occurs inside the human if our finger is broken down or cut it down from our hand then it can grow or not no because we do not have dividing cells if we talk about plants they have a dividing cells and they are for their lifetime means some particular plants part show the growth lifetime but if we talk about human beings human beings show growth only at a particular instant of time only cells divide they urinate form tissues then organ and then organ system if once the organ system is formed then it does not form again okay so this is how the non dividing cells are present inside a particular human being but some cells are dividing as you know this thing that when we get an injury or a wound around our hand or neck anywhere else so you can see that dividing cells somewhat are present over there and after a particular interval of time a sheath of skin is formed on the part which is injured so students we are going to understand each and everything about the tissue in this particular lecture so first we have to understand this thing that how tissues are being formed from the cells first thing is that what is the fundamental unit of life then you know this thing that cell is the fundamental unit of life but how they are present inside the body we have known all these thing in the particular chapter 1 but in the chapter 2 we will see that the cells unite to form a particular tissue so let's take a look over a small video clip before starting this chapter so that you can make an overview map inside your mind that how tissues are formed inside a particular plant and a human body okay students so i am starting the video clip and we will learn some what about tissues and then we will learn about the plant tissue in this particular lecture in the upcoming lectures we will learn about the animal tissues as well okay now students what is the fundamental unit of life or what is the building block of an organism so definitely the answer will be cell so what is cell it is the fundamental unit of life which organism comprises of now you have a think about this thing that how number of cells are needed by a particular organism to survive so you have known this thing very well that a unicellular organisms like amoeba has only a single cell inside its body and only a single cell performs all the activities like respiration 
digestion, locomotion, and last one, excretion. Okay, now if we talk about a particular animal like cats and dog, are they unicellular? No, they are multicellular. Means their body comprises of millions and trillions of cells. Okay, now we can see that the type A cells and we can see the type B cells as well inside a particular human body. Type A cells are performing the respiration procedure. Type B cells are performing the digestion procedure. Now, what do we call these group of cells? What is the specific term which is used? The specific term is tissues. Different kind of tissues are person inside the different organs to perform the specific functions. Okay, now. These tissues are really responsible for performing different kind of functions inside a particular human body. Okay, now if we talk about a multicellular organisms like us, in our muscles, the tissues are present. Now, they are present for the contraction and even the relaxation. Now, have you heard about blood? Is a blood tissue? Yes, blood is a tissue which is used for transporting nutrients, hormones, waste material and the connective tissue okay students now have you ever wondered about this thing that do plants have tissues or it is similar to animals or it is similar to human tissues so the answer is here no the plants have tissues but they are different from the animals okay student so students we are going to see that how plants are different from the animals, how tissues differ from each other. So let's see the contents of today's lecture. So the contents of today's lecture is, first, what is a tissue? Second, types of tissues. Okay, now there are two types of tissues. As you know this thing, plant tissue and animal tissue. Difference between the plant and the animal tissue is very important. And plant tissue. In plant tissue, which we are going to discuss about the two types of tissues, that is the dividing and non-dividing, merismatic as well as permanent. Okay. Now, let us start with the first slide, which we are going to tell you about that what is a tissue. So, students, in a unicellular organism, a single cell performs all the vital activities, for example, digestion, respiration, excretion, as I have given you the example of amoeba. In amoeba, the single cell is performing all the activities. Now, in case of multicellular organisms, specialized functions are performed by a different group of cells possessing a well-developed division of labor to provide highest possible efficiency of particular function. So, what is tissue doing? It is just doing the division of labor. It is present in different parts of the body and it is dividing the labor work which is done by cells of the body. As blood flows for transportation of oxygen, food, hormone, waste material, muscle cells are involved in movement. So, cells make a group called a tissue. So, as I told you this thing, when cells reunite, they form a group which is known as what? Tissue. Okay, students. Now, a tissue is a defined as a group of cells with similar structure organized to do a common function. So, students, you have to remember this thing. If a group of tissue is present inside a particular place, see if we talk about muscle tissue, then their function is contraction and relaxation. But if we talk about another tissues, like the tissues which are present in our skin, the tissues which are present in our legs, in our hands, in our limbs. So, if we talk about all these tissues, they perform different kind of functions. Okay, now what is the importance of tissues? First, we have to read this thing. So, Workload of individual cell has decreased. Now, in a unicellular organism, respiration, excretion, each and every activity like nutrition, transportation is done by a single cell. But if we talk about a multicellular cell, then what happens? Cells are organized in a different way which are forming the tissues. And these tissues are specialized to perform different kind of functions. Like the tissues which are present in our lungs, perform the function of respiration. The tissues which are present in our elementary canal perform the function of digestion. The tissues which are present in our RBCs perform the functions of transportation. So all these kind of tissues are 
performing different kind of functions like the blood blood is a tissue so it is performing the function of transportation of minerals nutrients in the whole parts of the body so the workload of a single cell is decreased next point tissue become organized to form organs and organ into organ system so i told you this thing students that a single cell combines to form what tissue many cells combine to form tissue then tissue form what organs and then this forms what organ system okay students now next point formation of tissues have brought about division of liver in multicellular organisms so division of liver means this thing only that the different tissues placed at different parts of our body perform the different kind of functions okay like respiration excretion transportation nutrition multicellular organisms have higher survival due to improved body organization and higher efficiency of functions now if we talk about a unicellular organism then they do not have a higher survival why because a single cell is performing different kind of functions but if we talk about a multicellular organism then different functions are performed by different tissues so they have higher survival next tissue term was coined by bichat bichat was the scientist who coined the term tissue next study of tissue is known as what histology so as i told you in the first chapter also the study of anything is related to its thesis so the study of tissue is known as what histology okay students now students we are going to learn about the two types of tissues mainly so what are the two types of tissues actually tissue is differentiated into two part first is the plant tissue and second one is the animal tissue so first we are going to learn about the plant tissue actually if we talk about plant tissue then they are what dividing now if we talk about the animal tissues they are non dividing in animals tissues are non dividing but the cells on an injured parts get repaired okay by the formation of new cells next we are going to learn about the differences between a plant and an animal tissue so what are the basic differences that occurs in the plant and the animal tissue let us understand this thing so first point is dead supportive tissues are more abundant as compared to living tissue so actually plant is non motile they do not show locomotion so students they do not need the living tissues so maximum tissues in a plant are dead next living tissues are more common as compared to dead tissues so the same thing animals are motile they move from one place to another so they need the living tissues next point they require less maintenance energy now less energy will be required by the tissues because they are not moving so the expenditure of the energy is less here if we talk about animals then animals require more maintenance energy now the third point there is differentiation of meristematic and permanent tissues so there are two types of tissues which are present inside the plant the meristematic tissues which are dividing tissues and the permanent tissues which are non dividing tissues next such differentiation is absent so in animal body non dividing tissues are present fourth point organization is just simple okay so tissue organization is very simple now if we talk about animals the organization is complex with development of more specialized localized organs and organ system so different type of organs contains different type of tissues like muscle cell contains tissues of different type blood tissue is different and the tissues which are present in different kind of organs like the ovaries fallopian tube testes or we can uh, talk about our digestive system or lung so all the tissues are performing the different kind of function so it is very complex to understand okay fifth point tissues organization is towards stationary habit stationary habit means they are non motile non motile means they do not move okay the plants do not move but if we talk about the humans or the animals tissue organization is towards high mobility 
why it is towards high mobility because the locomotion is seen inside the animal body okay students so all these differences you have to learn some differences may be asked in your board level examination so be prepared for it these differences are really easy to understand you can learn all the five differences and attempt the questions very easily okay students now students we are going to see this video clip and understand that what is the basic difference between a plant and an animal tissue which we have seen through a very good table here so you have a wondered that plant has living tissues or non living tissue so students i want to tell you this thing that plants are non motile so they constitute of the non living tissues mostly the dead tissues okay because they are non motile now why they need dead tissues actually dead tissues provide the mechanical support to the plant okay they require less maintenance as well now if we talk about animals they are motile they show the locomotion they show the movement and because of the movement they comprise of the living tissues inside their body okay now if we talk about the support so tissues provide support but we have a proper developed skeletal system for supporting our body but plants do not have it now if we talk about the type of tissues inside the plants there are two type of tissues first is dividing second is non dividing okay and no uniform growth is seen by the plant actually plant cells keep on dividing themselves and they grow throughout their life but this does not occur inside the animal cell okay this thing is absent inside the animal cell our growth takes place at a particular age and after a particular age it stops now the uniform growth is not seen inside plants and it is restricted to some parts of the plants okay now if we talk about animals they show a uniform growth okay they have the dividing tissues in the particular parts of the body okay now if we talk about animals and plants these are the basic differences you have to learn students the first is they are non motile in plants if we talk about animals they are motile now if we talk about tissues in animals mostly tissues are living in plants mostly tissues are non living okay now plants shows no uniform growth actually in their body the dividing tissues are present in maximum amount and they can show growth throughout their life but if we talk about an animal animal grows at a particular instant of life that is if an animal becomes an adult then the growth stops actually if we talk about we are taking an example over here that if we talk about the height of a person you can see the height of a person increases till the age of 18 to 19 years of age then it stops why does it stop students because the tissues become permanent over there now they will not divide they will not grow okay throughout their life the height of the person will remain same okay so we have to see this thing that if we talk about plants plants may grow then they are cut then they grow again this does not occurs inside a human body so these are the basic differences you have to learn about plants and animal tissues okay students now we are going to learn about the plant tissues so what are the two type of plant tissues which are present so first is the meristematic tissue and second one is the permanent tissue so we are going to talk about the meristematic tissue meristematic tissues are those tissues which are dividing and if we talk about plant tissue then the permanent tissues are those tissues which are non dividing once they form they become permanent okay students so let us talk about the first type of tissue that is meristematic tissues so students we are going to learn about the flow chart of the plant tissue first then we will learn about the meristematic tissues okay so first we are going to see the plant tissue chart actually plant tissues are divided into two types it is bifurcated into two the meristematic and the permanent now these tissues are further divided on the basis of their location and origin so let us see this thing so meristematic tissues are divided into three types first is the apical meristem that is present on the roots and the shoot part of the plant okay now if we talk about the lateral meristem then it is present in between the stem of the plant 
Now there is intercalary meristem also which is present at the internode part of the plant. Okay, so these are three types of meristematic tissues which are responsible for the growth of the plant as they keep on dividing their lifetime which is also known as totipotency. Totipotency means the capability of the cells to divide and form new cells. Okay, so meristematic tissues are those tissues which show this type of function. Next, we are going to talk about the permanent tissues. So permanent tissues are of two types. First is the simple permanent tissue and second one is the complex permanent tissue. Now, simple permanent tissues are of three types. First is parenchyma, second is colonchyma and third one is sclerenchyma. Now, sclerenchyma is again divided into two parts. First is fiber and second one is sclerids. Do not get worried about this flowchart. I will make you learn this flowchart in a very short and simpler way at the end of third to fourth lecture. So, please students pay attention towards the things which I am making you understood. Now, the fibers are, if we talk about sclerenchyma, then the fibers and sclerids are the two divisions of it. Now, if we are going to talk about the complex permanent tissues, then they are divided into two parts. That is the vascular tissues of the plant, the xylem and the phloem. So, xylem and phloem. Xylem performs the function of the transport of water. And if we talk about phloem, then it performs the function of transport of the food. That is the sucrose. Okay, now xylem has parts like tracheids, vessels, xylem parenchyma, xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers. Now, if we talk about phloem, then it has four parts, sieve tubes, companion cells, phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers. So all these parts which we are going to discuss about in the next upcoming lecture. So do not get worried about the permanent tissues. They are very, very easy to learn. Actually, every cell of a plant consists of the vascular tissue. If we talk about a dicot stem, then they are very well developed. Okay, they are developed in the form of vascular bundles. But if we talk about the monocot stem, then they are not very well developed. We will learn about all these things in the upcoming lecture. So let us start with the first type of tissue that is the meristematic tissue. Okay, now meristematic tissue, these are simple living tissues having thin walled, compactly arranged immature cells which are capable of division and formation of the new cells. So what happens students, these are the meristematic cell they keep on dividing forming the new type of cells okay and this type of function is known as totipotency next the features of meristematic tissues actively dividing cells are present in growing regions of the plant example root and shoot tip so you can see students when we cut the root tip or shoot tip of any kind of plant after a particular interval of time or we can see that after few five to four days you can see the new shoot or tip of root arises why this happens because of the presence of a different kind of meristematic tissue which is known as apical meristem over there now cells are small and thin walled so cells of the meristematic tissues are very very small and they are thin walled okay they do not have a thick wall next Intercellular spaces are absent, means they are forming a compact tissue. Like we are arranging these kind of rings. Look at this diagram I am drawing over here. This is representing the meristematic tissue. Okay, now it is have a specified nucleus in it, inside it. Now you can see here student, there is no space left behind the two cells. Okay, so cells are arranged in a compact way. They do not have intercellular spaces. Okay. Now, generally vacuoles are absent, dense cytoplasm and prominent nuclei are present. So, vacuoles in the meristematic tissues are absent. They have dense cytoplasm and prominent nuclei. Prominent nuclei means a small nuclei is present inside it. Now, Large number of cell organelles are present. Now cell organelles including the mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, nucleus, ribosome, lysosome, all the nuclei cell organelles are present inside the particular meristematic tissue. Now active metabolite state stored food is absent. So no metabolites are present, no electrolytes are present and even 
द स्टोर्ड फूड इज ऑल्सो एबसेंट इन साइड द मेरिस्टमेटिक टिश्यूज स्टूडेंट्स ओके नाउ स्टूडेंट्स वी आर गोइंग टू सी द मेरिस्मेटिक टिश्यू डायग्राम ओवर ह्योर एंड आई विल टेल यू इन ब्रीफ अबाउट ऑल दीज मेरिस्मेटिक टिश्यूज इन द अपकमिंग स्लाइड्स ओके सो यू कैन सी योर दिस इज अ प्लांट हैविंग द शूट टिप हैविंग द रूट टिप एंड इवन द स्पेस विच इज प्रेजेंट बिटवीन द स्टेम एंड द रूट टिप एंड शूट टिप सो वी कैन मार्क इट हियर फर्स्ट वन इज द एपिकल मेरिस्टेम विच इज प्रेजेंट ऑन द शूट टिप ऑफ द प्लांट नाउ इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द मेरिस्टेम विच इज प्रेजेंट इन द स्टेम पार्ट ऑफ द प्लांट नोन एज इंटर कैलरी मेरिस्टेम ओके इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द स्टेम पार्ट ऑफ द प्लांट नाउ इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द रूट पार्ट ऑफ द प्लांट नाउ रूट प्लांट ऑफ द प्लांट ऑल्सो कंसिस्ट ऑफ द एपिकल मेरिस्टेम ओनली बट द स्पेस बिटवीन द इंटर कैलरी मेरिस्टेम एंड द रूट पार्ट ऑफ द प्लांट consist of the meristem which is known as the lateral meristem we are going to study about all these meristematic tissues in brief students so let us take a look of how a meristem matic tissue look like so i have drawn the diagram above in the last slide also so you can see here these hexagonal rings are arranged in a compact way okay they are arranged like this that they do not have any kind of intercellular spaces which are present inside them so no intercellular spaces can be seen between them and you can see a prominent nuclei which is present inside it okay and the cytoplasm consisting of different kind of cell organelles okay now vacuole is absent remember this thing so this is a typical meristematic tissue very easy to draw i can draw it over here please draw it like this in your notebooks so that you do not get forget okay these are the hexagonal rings which are attached to each other without any space and there is a nucleus and the space around nucleus which is known as what cytoplasm of the cell so this is the permanent so this is the meristematic tissue now students we are going to discuss about the classification of the meristematic tissues on the basis of origin where they are present inside a particular plant so first we are going to talk about the primary meristem now it is being derived directly from the meristem of the embryo that is the pro meristem okay now the meristem of the embryo is known as what pro meristem and this primary meristem is derived from it now they add to primary growth of the plants okay so they just add to the primary growth of the plant primary means the cells which keep on dividing forming the new cells okay now you can see in this diagram also students that the cell division is taking place over here and when the cell division is taking place the meristematic tissues are present that is the apical meristem is present over here okay students now there is the secondary meristem as well so it is formed by the permanent tissues means they do not divide further if once formed they become permanent okay these are having cells derived from the permanent tissues they usually add to the diameter of the plant that is they are responsible for forming the girth of the plant they just increases the girth of the plant okay they are not responsible for the elongation of the plant they are responsible for increasing the girth the width of the plant the diameter of the plant okay students now we can here see the secondary meristem clearly okay now the thickening of the plant is done because of the presence of the cork cambium and the vascular cambium which occurs inside the permanent tissues now it is being derived from the primary meristem permanent tissue that have the capacity of division form meristematic tissues that is cambium vascular cambium and cork cambium so meristematic tissues are cork cambium and vascular cambium and you can see that they keep on dividing forming increasing the girth of the plant okay now students we are going to see the classification which are based on the location okay which are based on the location where they are present so let us see first one so first is the apical meristem 
actually apical means this is present on the top or the bottom so it is present at the growing tips of the stems or the roots so growing tips are stems or roots so it is present at the top or bottom part of the plant cell division in this tissue leads to elongation of stem and root thus it is involved in primary growth of the plant this is very important students yam time questions has been asked for that elongation of the root and shoot is responsible for so apical meristem is the meristem which is responsible for elongation of the root as well as shoot okay so it shows the primary growth of the plant second type of meristem is intercalary meristem it is the part of the apical meristem which is left behind during the growth period okay so it is the part of the apical meristem which is left behind during the growth period okay students now these are present at the base of the leaf and internode region so at the base of the leaf or we can say the internode region now i want to make this clear where is the internode region present so this is a plant let us assume this thing okay now these are the roots so you can see here this is the space from where the leaf arises so the space from where the leaf arises is known as what the node or the internode region and this intercalary meristem is present over there now these lead to increase in the length of the leaf example in grass stem bamboo stem and mint stem so these are the types of stem in which the intercalary meristem is present very importantly learn this thing in the grass stem in mint stem and the next example that is the bamboo stem so let us revise the two types of meristem which we learned first this is the apical meristem which is present on the growing parts of the plant that is the root tip or the shoot tip and the next one that is the intercalary meristem which is left behind part of the apical meristem present at the internode region of the leaf okay now the last meristem which is present is the lateral meristem it is also called as secondary meristem now it occurs along the sides of the longitudinal axis of the plant it gives rise to the vascular tissues and causes growth in the girth of the stem and the root so this type of meristem is responsible for the growth in the stem or the girth of the plant okay now students it is present at the longitudinal axis of the plant now this is the diagram which is showing all the types of tissues which are present so let us just revise this thing that where they are present so if we talk about the apical meristem you can see here it is present at the root part and it is present at the shoot part okay so this is the shoot part of the plant and this is the root part of the plant so it is present at the growing tips of the plant next we talked about the intercalary meristem so intercalary meristem is present at the internode part of the leaf next we talked about the lateral meristem so lateral meristem is present in the space okay at the stem part okay so this is how the arrangement of the meristematic tissues takes place and these are the locations where they are present okay so we are going to see and revise the types of meristematic tissues which we learned till now okay so students in this part we are going to learn about this thing that plant tissues are of two types which we learned till now that is first is they are dividing and second one is they are non dividing now we talked about the non dividing cells as well as the dividing cells that is the tissues okay now if we talk about the dividing tissues so the first thing that comes in our mind is about the meristematic tissues the dividing tissues are known as what meristematic tissues now these meristematic tissues is derived from a greek word meristos means divide okay now the meristematic tissues are responsible for the growth of the plant elongation of the plant and also for the growth and the girth increase of the plant now how they are responsible actually they are present in the growing parts of the plant growing parts means the parts which need the growth okay now as i talked about this thing that plant grows for lifetime okay the growth does not stops okay so you can see this thing that a old tree keeps on growing keeps on growing it does not stop and the roots of that tree spreads throughout that area so why does this happens because of the presence of 
द मेरिस्टमेटिक टिश्यूज इन साइड द प्लांट ओके स्टूडेंट सो वी टॉक अबाउट द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ मेरिस्टेम्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन साइड द प्लांट फर्स्ट इज द एपिकल मेरिस्टेम सेकेंड वन इज द लेटल मेरिस्टेम एंड द लास्ट वन इज द इंटर कैलरी मेरिस्टेम नाउ लेटस रिवाइज द थिंग्स विच वी रेड अबाउट द एपिकल मेरिस्टेम so apical meristem is located at the roots and the shoot tips that is the growing part of the plant next help to increase the length lateral meristem lateral meristem is if we talk about it is means side to side okay side to side means it is located at the girth part that is the cambium part it is responsible for increasing the girth that is diameter of the plant helps to increase the diameter okay you can write width also you can write girth also that is one and the same thing students now if we talk about the last type of meristem which is present inside the plant is intercalary meristem so what is intercalary meristem students it is located at the base of the leaves or the internodes as i told you about this thing helps to grow twigs into branches so the twigs which arises from the stem grows into the branches and this intercalary meristem help them to grow so these all three types of meristem which we talked about are present inside the plant and we have revised all the three types of meristems very briefly okay students now experiment showing elongation of root so we are going to understand that how elongation of root takes place inside a particular plant okay so let us take a look over the activity which we are going to perform so what we are going to take here we are going to take the two jars and fill it with water so let us move step wise take two glass jars and fill them with water now take two onion bulbs and place one on each jar so what we are taking we are taking two onion bulbs and placing on each jar jar a jar b now observe the growth of the roots in both the bulbs for few days now after some time what will happen the apical meristem which is present inside the roots of the bulbs will keep on dividing and growing and the new roots will be formed so on day 4 cut the root tips of the onion bulb in jar 2 by about 1 cm in jar 2 on day 4 we cut the roots now after this observe the growth of the roots in both the jars so after this we will observe the growth of roots after a particular instant of time so students from this activity what do we observed what did we understand so let us take a look over the questions okay so this is jar a and this is jar b now we are putting the onion bulbs on both of the jars and we are seeing that the roots of the onion bulbs start to grow in jar b and even in jar a and the conditions are similar in both of the jars okay now what happens when we cut the root tip of the jar b what will happen if it will grow again or not so we will understand this thing by answering some kind of questions which are important to you all and this activity is important for your board level examinations so the first question is which of the two onions has longer roots and why so the roots of onion in jar 1 would be longer whereas the root of onion in jar 2 stop after the root tips of the onion bulb 2 in the jar have been cut so what will happen students after we cut the root tips of the jar 2 then what will happen they will stop growing because the apical meristem will die over there and in jar 1 the roots will keep on growing okay when the root tips are cut the apical meristem responsible for increase in the length get removed okay so this is the question to this activity now next question question number 2 do the roots continue growing even after we have removed their tips so if we remove the tips do the roots grow continue so the growth of the plant occur only in certain specific regions in the above picture the roots of the onion bulb grow fast at the tip due to the presence of dividing cells of meristematic tissue located at this point so if we cut the roots also then also they start growing again because they have the presence of apical meristem inside it next question question number 3 why would the tips stop growing in jar 2 after we cut them so after cutting the apical meristems after removing the apical meristems from the jar 2 the growth stops why new cells produced by meristem are initially like those of the cells of the meristem itself but as they grow and mature their characteristics slowly changes 
and they become differentiated as components of the tissues okay so what happens the when the new cells are forming they become differentiated okay now apical meristem is present at the growing tips of stems and roots and increases the length of the stem and the root so what happens students the apical meristem which is present will be formed to the tissues now its tissues will become specified now you have cut the roots of the jar too so what will happen the roots will not grow again okay so students from this experiment we understood by this thing the apical meristems are really responsible for the growth of the root tip as well as the shoot tip okay students so student till now we have learned about what are meristematic tissues that is the dividing tissues which are present inside the plant responsible for the elongation and the growth of the girth of the plant now we are going to understand about permanent tissues so permanent tissues are composed of those cells which have lost their capability to divide now permanent tissues only comprises of those cells which do not divide actually they comprises of those cells usually that are non living okay they are dead they have definite shape size and thickness so they have a definite shape also size also and thickness even the permanent tissue may be dead or living so usually they are dead but some what permanent tissues are found in living state as well the division and differentiation of the cells of meristematic tissues give rise to permanent tissues when meristematic tissues divide and becomes mature they form permanent tissue this is the whole procedure okay in cell differentiation developing tissues and organs changes from simple to more complex forms to become specialized for specific functions so they become specialized for specific functions now if we talk about the root tips and the shoot tips they keep on dividing but if we talk about the permanent tissues like the bark cells which are formed so they are what permanent tissues okay now they have the small pores what they are known as lenticels and even on the leaf surface also the stomata are present they do not change their shape at all so all these are counted inside the permanent tissues which are responsible for performing the respiration transportation inside the plants okay so we are going to learn about the permanent tissues in the next upcoming video as well students so let us take a look over the differences between the meristematic tissues and the permanent tissues okay we will learn about all the permanent tissues in the next lecture we will start with it okay so this is the last part of this lecture in which i am going to tell you about the differences between both of the two so let just look it quickly so in meristematic tissue cells are small and may be rounded oval rectangular or polygonal so they are rounded they are oval rectangular or polygonal matlab means their shape is not defined okay cells are large or different shapes according to the type of tissue so according to the type of tissue their shape and the size is specified cells are very thin walled cells are thin or thick walled so here thin walled cells are present as we talked about meristematic and in permanent they may be thin they may be thick cells are rich in cytoplasm okay if we talk about permanent cytoplasm is present as a layer along the cell wall so after the cell wall cell membrane is present and after cell membrane the cytoplasm part is there a prominent nucleus is present okay nucleus is relatively small in size so if we talk about prominent nucleus so the large size nucleus is present inside the meristematic tissue but if we talk about permanent tissue then small size nucleus is present vacuoles are small may even be absent so vacuoles may be absent or they are small okay if we talk about permanent then they are large central vacuole is present for the transportation process okay intercellular spaces are absent as we saw in the meristematic tissues if we talk about permanent tissues intercellular spaces are often present okay now cells are undifferentiated and give rise to different permanent tissues if we talk about permanent then cells are differentiated okay they are already differentiated they do not give rise to any kind of another tissue they do not divide power of cell division is present if we talk about permanent tissues lack the power of cell division so if we talk about meristematic they keep on dividing keep on dividing forming new type of cells as i told you this thing that function is known as what totipotency but in permanent tissues you can never observe 
the totipotency once the cell is being formed it is permanent it does not divide last point always living if we talk about permanent tissues may be living or dead okay so if we talk about meristematic they are always living because they are responsible for the elongation of the plant they are responsible for the growth of the plant if we talk about permanent tissues they are not forming the growth of the plant once they are permanent then they do not divide okay they do not promote the growth so they may be living also or so they may be dead also okay students so this is all about the differentiation between both of the two now students the lecture number 1 is over and we talked about many things in the lecture number 1 so there is a very small homework for you all to do so there is assignment number 1 i will give the assignments in each and every lecture now so you can analyze each and every question and in the last lecture of this chapter we will discuss the whole module and you can see all the questions answers over there so there is a small assignment in which you have to solve the exercise number 1 objective questions only from a1 to b10 and in exercise number 3 you have to solve all these questions which are written on the board so students please solve these questions do your analysis so that you can remember each and everything about the plant tissues okay now we learned about the plant tissues in this lecture and we learned about this thing that how plant tissues are divided into two parts that is the meristematic and the permanent tissues permanent tissues which we are going to learn about in the second lecture but if we talk about meristematic tissues meristematic tissues are present as the primary meristem and the secondary meristem if we talk about on the basis of location then there are three types of meristems which are present first one is the apical meristem which is present in the root and the shoot tips of the plant second one is the intercalary meristem which is present at the internode part or the base of the leaf and last one is the lateral meristem okay so students you have to learn all the things and where they are present i talked about the differentiation between the plant and the animal tissues as well plant tissues are totally different from the animal tissues because if you see this thing that plants perform the activity but they do not have a complex structure but if we talk about our human body we have a very complex structure the digestion is performed by different organs excretion is performed by different organs nutrition is performed by different organs and transportation is performed by totally blood and the main human organ that is heart so students you have to learn many more things in this tissue chapter in the next lecture we are going to learn about the permanent tissues how permanent tissues are present inside a particular plant and we are going to see that the xylem and the phloem that is the vascular bundles or the vascular tissues which are responsible for the total transportation system inside the plants students so be tuned for the next lecture students i will be waiting for you all to see the next lecture of mine please revise the first lecture thoroughly solve the module do your analysis until then bye so thank you